Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to our conversations here with Dan. And Jed. Yeah, back for 2022. I can't believe it. I know. And we've, we've been at this a little while now, so it's good to have another year. Glad you're joining us. You know, we have on the Broadway Church of Christ YouTube channel, where, where most people are watching this, some people listen by podcast in a few places, but where most people are watching, we're over, we're over 1,700 people have subscribed to the channel. Wonderful. Um, so we just want to say a big thank you as we get things started for all of you who have subscribed to the channel, who've been regularly watching, and we would encourage you to continue sharing these videos, writing in, commenting in a variety of ways. I was just responding to comments this morning, and I think I responded, well, I know I responded to one from uh, Zimbabwe, I responded to one from Pakistan, Wonderful. from India. And uh, someone in South America, I think he was from Brazil, but I don't want to say for certain, but I know there was someone in South America. So it's all over, and we just want to thank you for helping these to spread, because without your watches and likes and comments and all those sort of things, it doesn't reach as far. Right, and so, share them with people that are searching, seeking, yeah. trying to find answers from the Bible. Share particular programs with those. It's a great way of reaching out evangelistically to people. Right. And if you are someone who is out there seeking, searching, studying, and you come across something that you are curious about, you want more information about, by all means, send us a comment, send an email to the one that we put up on the screen, the info at broadwaycoc.com. Uh, sometimes we respond individually to those. Sometimes we have another video conversation to cover it. Yep. So, Like today. Yeah, we'd be glad to help out. So this is one of those that was sent in to you, Dan. So what was the question essentially? I know what it's about, but... Well, the question was based on a, a comment that had been made uh, in one of our videos about providence. And mm. the, the uh, questioner wanted to know, you know, what is the right thing to teach about providence? What does the Bible say about providence? So talking about like God's providential direction, that sort of thing, or... I suppose. Uh, okay. My my first response to the brother who asked the question was, the Bible doesn't say anything about providence. Ooh. The word providence is not in the Bible. I was going to say, it's a word that's used in a lot of religious conversations. Right. And so what I'd like to do today is is talk about what the Bible says about what people mean when they use uh, the word okay. providence, which is not in the Bible. I think... You know, this is a personal opinion, but I think in our circles, at least, in the circles of Churches of Christ, often the word providence is used as a, as a semi-avoidance of, of facing the fact that God works directly in the world today. Hmm. And uh, so when we, when we look at some fundamental passages, for example, in the book of Genesis— that's pretty foundational right there. Yeah, and I think, okay. Jed, I think Jed can find Genesis. I think I can. Genesis chapter 50. All right. And this is when the brothers of Joseph are confronting Joseph, and you have the whole story about Joseph being sold into slavery and how that all oh, ended yeah. up. But Genesis chapter 50, uh, read verses 19 and 20 for us, if you would there, Brother Jed. Sure. It says, but Joseph said to them, do not fear, for I am in the for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. All right, so God was working through the actions of the discontented brothers of Joseph when Joseph was sold into slavery, when Joseph was put into prison, when all those things happened. God meant it for good, he mm -hmm. says, okay. to accomplish. See, God was trying to accomplish something. So right. rather than using a word, which is not in the Bible, to describe this, we could just say, to be a little bit more biblical, that God was working in these events to bring about a specific mm. result in his plan, and that result was to keep the nation of Israel alive because mm -hmm. he had promised Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. Right. And if they had been wiped out in the famine, then that promise wouldn't have been kept. But God was keeping his promise working through these events. Okay. Okay. Well, in, in the next verse, 
you know, he goes on and he says, I will provide, meaning Joseph will provide for them. So typically when, when you hear people using this word providence, are they thinking more of a substitutionary word for what you're talking about in 19 and 20 as God's plan of action and actions? Or are they talking about more of a verse 21, he provides things and they're substituting him? <clears throat> well, the word, the etymology of the word does go back to the word provide. Okay. And, and that's, that's a very prescient comment. Jed, oh my but uh, what people use the word for mostly in religious discussions is is the invisible. They might say the invisible working of God, and they would usually apply something like through natural means. Mm, They're okay. trying to limit God in the way that He works through natural means. Natural is a is a bad word to me. I was going to say, so they use providence. So typically, this is obviously isn't everyone out there, but typically in a conversation that you might be part of, they're saying providence as a way of avoiding the supernatural? Correct. Okay. That's what I object to, hands down. Because yeah. this was not natural. This was God moving events. This was the supernatural mm. reaching into human events and moving events so that certain things happen. Mm, okay. Now, now Satan does this as well as God. Mm. Um, let's look at a couple of other passages. Um, if if you go to um, the New Testament to Romans chapter eight, which is a very familiar verse for people, uh, verse twenty eight. Let's see what the ESV says here. All right, Romans eight twenty eight. Is that what you said? Mm hmm. Uh, and we know that though, we know, let me try that again. Good yeah. gracious. Verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Okay. Now that's, that's a terrible translation. Hmm. And the reason is because the whole context of the passage is about what God does. And mm -hmm. the, the Greek verb is actually soon erge which is third person singular it means he works all things okay and if you'll check some other uh, translations let's see what the, the NIV, says. niv says it says we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him mm -hmm. the word god is not in the verse it actually says he works mm. and if you trace it back up contextually in the original language it's probably the holy spirit works mm, okay. but still it's not just things see things i'm sorry to tell y'all but things don't do anything <laughs> things do not work right but god does work things god works all things and in this context okay. he means the sufferings in your life everything mm. else god works them according to his purpose the word the, the phrase according to is a kata phrase, which is an adverbial phrase, which modifies the verb he works. How does he work? According to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So God is purposefully using certain things to accomplish what he set out to do, which is exactly what he did mm. in the book of Genesis in the case of Joseph. Okay. See? So God may be using your sufferings and the way that you handle your sufferings to bring other souls to Christ or to have a good influence, you know, but God is doing that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of other scriptures to, to go in this. Um, look at um, Philippians 2.13. Okay. This really gets to the that was then and this is now mentality that, you know, mm. the supernatural is all gone or something like right. that. Right. But Philippians 2.13, what does it say? It says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. All right. So God works in us. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, is that natural? See, if it's natural, we don't need God because the right. natural is nature. It's not the creator of nature. Natural is just things taking their natural course. Right. That's like things work. Things don't do squat. Yeah. This thing laying on the table, it won't do anything. It'll just lay there. Yeah. See? But God is moving things. God is working in and through us. Look at Acts 14. Okay. And verse 26. 
And I think many Christians are challenged by this. Okay, Acts because 14. 26, start yeah. where it says they came to Antioch. That might be the verse before. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's verse 26. All right. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. All right, now look at that last part that you read. They mm -hmm. declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door. See, all that God had done with them and how he mm. had opened a door. So it wasn't just Paul and his partner going out there doing their thing. God did this through them, and God opened that mm. door to the Gentiles. Now, what yeah. does that mean? That means the supernatural God intervened in the natural course of things and opened a door and worked in Paul and his partner, you know, to, yeah. to bring the gospel. Now, did people work? Yes, but God worked through them. So I guess that's kind of the natural question that people want to set up an either or when I would guess it's more of a both and it is of whether people, whether it's God works everything or he works through and with things. It's both. And it's going to be both. Yes. So it's not that God wants every action that happens in this world to happen, but he can work through and with it. But there are also things that he is going to do because he hasn't just taken a back seat for the rest of Sure. The natural order of things. Well, and consider these things. Consider Philip and the eunuch and how God took a praying seeker and a praying preacher, and he brought those two together. Mm -hmm. Now, that was not just natural happenstance. Right. That was the divine working of God. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cornelius and Peter, same thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we could go through lots of examples in Acts where, you know, grounds shook, doors came off walls, people were spirited away, dreams came. Right. You know. And, and, you know, oftentimes people, people credit providence, whatever that is, I have no clue, mm. but they cre credit providence. Let's just say God. Could we just do that, say God? But they, they want to credit providence for the answer to a prayer. But if we look in Scripture for how God answers prayer, oftentimes when people pray, God sends angels. Mm. And those angels do things. And Ooh, all through the Bible, I can give you time after time I was going to say, that's making some time. people real uncomfortable that's right fine. now. <laughs> uh, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to do service for them that shall inherit salvation? Hebrews 1.14. Hmm. Daniel prayed. God sent the angel and closed the mouth. Peter and the people at John Mark's mother's house prayed, and mm -hmm. the angel came and let Peter out of jail. You know? Right, right. And so, um, you know, so, the book of Hebrews teaches the same thing. For us, Hebrews 13, Hebrews 1, 14. So it's not that by saying providence isn't in the Bible, we're saying that God isn't working. Oh, no, it's quite the opposite. But we're, we're trying to point out that usually providence is a code word for taking the supernatural out of what's happening. That's exactly right. And there may be some people that don't use it that way, but it's probably going to be clearer if we just come out of the gate and say, God was at work in this. Why would you use a non-biblical term when discussing biblical ideas? Why would you use a word that covers up the work of God when we want to give credit to the work of God? I'm guessing it's because we're uncomfortable with actually putting God into the situation. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I actually had this conversation with my wife. Uh, we were doing one of those holiday road trips, you know, where you end up solving the problems of the world on, in eight hours or whatever. And we talked about how often we take out God and his working in the world or in our life because we're uncomfortable with that concept. Yeah. Uh, instead of walking up and saying, I'm praying that God will do X in your life, we're like, I pray that things get better. And we just kind of leave it blank. Mm -hmm. and we have these code words that are meant to help us not feel, I don't know, uncomfortable in the situation is about all I can think of right now. Let's but, look at Colossians 4. Okay. Verses 2 and 3. Let's see. Colossians 2. Colossians 4. 4. Verses two and, three. 2 and 3. Okay. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. 
At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. God will open a door for mm. us. Now, does that seem like natural things are taking their course? No. It, no. And that's, I think that hope that God continues to work and that we ask him to work for us is something that is often lacking. Absolutely. You know, God give me the strength to do whatever. God give me the ability. You know, we sing a song, of, lead me to some soul today. Do we believe that? Do we accept that God does that? The Bible teaches that he does. Yeah. So why cover it up and call it something that he's not? Lord, you know the seekers out there. Put me in the path mm. of those people so Man, that I was, can teach them. It was just so lucky that I run, ran into that guy yesterday. Yeah, it was lucky. No, it wasn't yeah. lucky. Yeah. 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 There's, a, there's something driving the machine. Hmm. But we have to lend ourselves to the use of God. Another thing I'd like to touch on real quickly in this, okay. the idea of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. um, one of the words that is used for spiritual gifts is the word energemata, which means workings, and it's the working of God. Hmm. So um, let me give you an example. Look yeah. at Galatians 2.9, I think it is. Okay. I think it's verse 9. See what Let's that see. says. Uh, when they perceived the grace given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship. Yeah, keep going. All right. Uh, that we should go to the Gentiles and then... Da, 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 da. Look at verse, verse 8. Ten. Let's see. Verse 8. For he who worked through Peter... Okay. Verse 8 says, For he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to be to the circumcised, worked also through me for mine and the Gentiles. All right, and that's the word energeo, which means okay. to to work. And then in 1 Corinthians 12, a gift is called an energemata. It's a way that God works through a person. Hmm. And it's actually God doing the work through the person yeah. by giving them this particular gift. Now, some people don't like the word gift for the same reason that they use the word providence and instead of gift they want to say talents, talents. yeah because oh, yeah. a talent is naturally born into you it right. has nothing to do with god actually giving you something right that you didn't have before and this is the way we try to neuter mm. the power of scripture yeah by by calling it something different than it is and it's okay and it's n nothing wrong with the word talent but no. it is if we are using it as a substitute for what's actually the scriptural foundation. Yeah, if you want to use it scripturally, use it as a piece of money. True. <laughs> I mean, this, I, I thought this was about conversations about the actual B-I-B-L-E. Eh, no, uh, yes, yeah, of that's, course. <laughs> yeah. That's the book for me. Right. So, um, Which is, it's funny that you bring that up. I mean, how many times do we teach lessons and we interchange those things? We go, well, they were talking about money, but it could be your talents that you have within you and yeah, all that sort of thing. Yeah. No. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> All right, so let me throw one more verse in here. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. 1 Thessalonians. That Thessalonians is always hiding in here after somewhere, Colossians. Mine is always tied into everything else paper-wise. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 2, and we'll go down here to verse 18. This is when Paul was... There was a young church, the Thessalonians, and Paul had only spent like three or four weeks with them and had to leave, and he was worried about them, and so he's talking about trying to get to them, mm. to encourage them. Okay, 218? Yep. Because we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. All right, now wait a minute. Does that mean that Satan could actually work in the world to the point where he could keep somebody mm. from going from point A to point B? It seems like sure it. Sure sounds me. like it. Now, can't God, does God actually open doors when Satan tries to close them? Does God actually answer prayer? So do we believe that yeah. God and Satan and the angels of God and the angels of Satan are in a war and they're mm. working in the natural world to either... Uh, uh, facilitate or impede yeah. God's purpose. Yeah, I think the Bible teaches that from cover to cover. I think it does too. Here's a little wrench for, 
for as we go through it, does it almost do the same thing of neutering these terms, so to, as you were saying, if we start using it too flippantly? Because just as much as there are some using people— Using what too flippantly? As much as some people avoid talking about God working and Satan working, there's also that— I'm going to say that they're responsible for everything. Yeah, so like, like like God God got me that parking place, and then God got me a special deal at Kmart. Or God, Sa Satan made me burn my casserole. Yeah, or, know, or, yeah, that sort of thing. Does it accomplish the same thing? Yeah. See, we can we can be too flippant with it, but the Bible teaches that that in answer to prayer, and as we do as we lend ourselves to doing God's work that God works, mm. God answers prayer, God intervenes in the natural course of things. So my point here is instead of just calling this providence, mm -hmm. unless you mean that God provides, which he does in so many different ways, yeah. uh, let's call it what it is, which is the working of God. And let's give God praise and glory. And let's say God was able to accomplish this when something in God's purpose happens, I thank God that God has used you and me or this sister or this brother to accomplish this great thing. You know, let's just give God the credit mm. instead of always saying, now we're going to do this and we want to do this and I did this and I yeah. did that because... Which then we could go into the passages of you say you're going to go here and there and yeah. but if the Lord wills and yeah. Which has nothing to do with our discussion. No, but it's the idea of we can become so self-confident and naturalistic that we forget what's actually at work. Yeah, I think we've got a lot of the, is it John Locke or is it whose philosophy mm -hmm. that yeah. was the more naturalistic? Um, it, was, it was in vogue back in the 1800s to think of, uh, the natural and the scientific mm -hmm. rather than the supernatural. And so right. to give more credibility to religion, we kind of suck the supernatural out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we still do today. I mean, yeah. there's that, that element of if I can't prove it scientifically, you know, if I can't find a scientific foundation for it, it must not be real. But see, scientific often means naturalistic, mechanistic. It means that there's nobody driving the machine. Right. It just <laughs> happens. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so many other ways we yeah. could go with that so, one. But <laughs> So let's just summarize by saying this. God is at work in the world today. Mm -hmm. God is sending the angels. Satan and his angels are actively working in the world today. Yeah. Prayer gets to God and God does something about it. God is working in the lives of people that lend themselves to his purpose. Uh, we can say much more about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm. Uh, and that may be as for another I was video, say, but that's the same thing as what we're really yeah. talking about here. And we've done a few videos on that. In we fact, have. I think we've done, we did one even on, you know, does Satan answer prayers? You know, the idea that Satan is working in the world. Sure. So, you know, by all means, we would encourage you to look at some of those videos as well, um, because I completely agree with you that he is at work. Wait a minute. Let's write down this date. <laughs> and, um, did you hear and, him say, I completely agree with you? And I think that we do a disservice, not only just to our own spiritual growth, but to our witness in the world, our ability to evangelize when we take out the real power that's behind the message. Yeah. Unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond mm. all that we ask or imagine, yeah. according to the power that's at work in us. Mm -hmm. Does that sound natural or supernatural? Uh, a bit supernatural. It does to me too. Sounds like there's something that I am unable to do that is still happening through me, possibly? Yes, or with me or yeah. whatever, yes. Alongside? Yeah. So anyway, I hope this um, at least opens the door to a discussion. And mm. uh, if you have other questions... Um, Send them into the email, and he will field them, and then I'll get some <laughs> of them, and, and that's the way we'll do. Yeah, we'll, you know, we'll from there, kind of like the video we did closer to the end of last year. There's a lot of words that we do or don't use, and maybe just to take a moment and consider what they mean and why we're using them, or how the people around us are using them, and then compare that to what's in here. 
See, we're supposed to be a back to the Bible people, not a, an explain away the Bible because we want it to fit our modern philosophy people. Yeah. Agreed. That's a good enough place to stop right That'll there. be good. Thanks for watching, for listening if you're on the podcast. And like we said at the beginning, we would really love to hear back from you and for you to be sharing these as we continue to grow together. So thanks again, Dan. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.